Okay, cool. All right, let's start with the jumping jacks. So just getting that body warmed up. Happy Tuesday. All right, so we're definitely hitting total body today. Like I said, we're sort of chunking out the muscle group. So we're gonna start with legs, work our way into upper body, cardio, and then finish with some core. So just keep that in mind as we sort of build those pyramids that um, whatever muscles are sort of on fire, you're gonna get a good break from. Keep those toes moving, arms all the way up over the head for five, four, three, two, and one go over. Switch to those high kicks. They're going to wake up the lower body. So we're definitely, we're going to hit, what are we doing? We're hitting quads, glutes, hamstrings, little bit of cardio in the first round just to get the heart rate up there right from the get-go. And then we'll work our way back down to that base exercise is always going to be the longer exercise. Let's go one more high kick each side. And then shake those legs out and switch to those knees to chest. So drive the right knee in all the way up, squeeze, open, and drop to the floor. So just starting to work on a little bit of stability here, but mostly what you're looking for is that really tight squeeze so that you can almost feel the glutes stretch. And then it becomes a really exaggerated movement out to the side. So you start to feel the hip flexors open and warm up. We're starting with goblet squats. So we definitely want to be just sort of all sorts of ready to go. One more each side here. Squeeze, open, and down to the mat. Go ahead and shake those legs out. Nice wide stance here. Arms up and out to the side. Just pull through those fingertips right to left. Trying to keep those arms sort of nice and level. Shoulders and hips facing forward. And we're just trying to bring the upper body into the workout a little bit. Starting to feel that stretch from the rib cage to the hip bone, especially if you're sort of tucking that tailbone and keeping the back nice and straight. Yep. Let's go one more each side. Pull as far as you can through those fingertips. And then meet me right back in the center. We'll center those hips and shoot over into alternating toe touches. So again, nice straight back, reaching that right hand for the left toe. And this is another really good one to exaggerate the stretch with. For some reason, this always feels extra good in the morning. Um, but I want you to sort of focus on pushing your butt back behind you so that you're really exaggerating that hamstring and inner thigh stretch. And you can definitely linger at the bottom of that exercise for a couple seconds if you need to, but try to keep sort of the movement going so that uh, your, your body isn't sort of cold muscle pulling. Let's go one more each side. Again, get that chest as close down to the leg as you can. Center those hips and reach for that other tempo. And then right back up to the top. Go ahead and shake those legs out. Big arm circles forward. Wake up that upper body, scooping as much air as you can. And then go ahead and reverse those arm circles. Upper body will get a little bit of time here to uh, wake itself up. One more. All right, here we go. So we are going, starting with our longer intervals, 60 seconds, 45, 30, 15. That's going to be our peak. And then we'll move our way back down that pyramid, okay? So you're only going to need weight for the first exercise. And that first exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be in a goblet squat position. So I'll go ahead and say, feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, but depending on what your comfort zone is where I want you to hold that squat position. Dumbbells up at chest height. We're just gonna go down. We're gonna pulse four times at the bottom and then right back up. So keeping it super simple for that first exercise, okay? So just shake everything out. This is gonna give us 10 seconds and then we'll have plenty of time um, in between exercises to start into the next. So weights up, shoulders are in those back pockets, point your heels, point your toes. Here we go, drop down into the goblet squat, four pulses. One, two, three, four, and up. Again, down one, two, three, and four. And this is our longest interval. 
So we can go ahead and take our time. We know we're going to get those reps in, and we know we're coming back to it. So for now, we're just going to focus on form that nice straight back. Heels and toes are staying connected to the ground, especially as you push back up to that standing position. And keeping the chest nice and tall, which the goblet squat almost forces you to do, right? If you start to lean forward with that weight at chest height, you're just going to topple right over. And up. Nicely done. We have about 15 seconds to go. Waking those bodies up. And up through the heels. 10 seconds here. Drop down. Pulse. And push up through the heels. One more time. We've got three, two, one. And we're up. Weights to the side. We won't need that again until that last exercise. We're going to bring the side glutes into play here. I want you to take a nice wide stance. Toes are pointed forward here. We're doing side lunges. So let's drop to the right side first. You're just going to bend that right knee, drop that butt back behind you, and then push back up to the center, over to the left. So we're taking it nice and slow here. Only picking up the pace if you feel comfortable with the form. Again, this is a 45 second round. So we're totally going to get those reps in no matter what. But because we're doing that side lunge is the reason those toes are shooting straight forward. Because once again, we're looking for those knees to track over the toes to keep those joints nice and safe. And as you shove the butt back to get deep into that squat, that's where the knee tracks directly over the toes for five, four, three, two, and one. Shake the legs out. Let's bring the hamstrings into it a bit. So we've done these before. B stance, deadlifts. Right leg in front, left foot about a foot behind. And we're just going to sit back on that left foot. So the left leg's going to bend. The right leg stays nice and straight. And back up to the top. Sit back. Yeah, excellent. If you feel like you're wobbling, what I want you to do is keep your chest nice and tall. Yeah, there you go. You don't have to get too deep into it to feel that stretch on the first leg, but as soon as you let your chest drop, that's when the wobbles kick in. All the way through it. Sit back hard on that heel. Four, three, two, one, and we're up to the top. Shake it out. We've got our 15 seconds, that sort of apex of the pyramid, and we're going straight into high knees. 15 seconds, heart rate's up. Four, three, two, and one, high knees. We just got 15 seconds here, so we wanna make sure those knees are getting all the way up to belly button height. Just looking for the heart rate to skyrocket just a little bit. Five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. All right, we're coming back down the pyramid, so that left foot comes in front. Right foot is about a foot behind. We're gonna sit back on that right leg again. Keep that chest nice and tall, three, two, and one. Here we go, sit back, and four. No weights needed on this one. You can feel the work coming out of that back leg and the stretch from that front leg. Try to keep that front leg nice and straight. Really get the hamstring on that front leg, which is exactly what we want to target. Excellent, nice pace. Sit it back, excellent. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're up nice and tall again. Shake those legs out, get the blood flowing. We're back into that wide stance, side to side lunges here. So again, I want your toes pointed forward. Shoulders are in those back pockets so the chest stays nice and tall. Let's go to the right side. Bend it through the center, all the way over to the left. So feeling a little more flexy than that first round. Legs aren't quite tired enough to not get nice and deep into that squat yet. So again, the pace is totally up to you. I'd say moderate pace here. It's 45 second interval, so we get the reps in. And just focusing on form. We want to keep the core engaged, even through these lower body exercises that don't feel like we really need to necessarily. Core helps stabilize that spine whenever it moves. Four. Three, two, and one, and we're up tall. Shake the legs out, grab that weight again. Last exercise, we're back to that base. Long interval coming up. Plant the heels, plant the toes, just wider than shoulder width apart. Here we go, let's drop down. Down we pulse, one, two, three, 
two, three, four, and we're right back up to the top. The lower that you can get into that squat and that squat pulse, the more muscles have to come into play to pop you back up to that standing position. Two, one, and up. So you can feel, you sort of get all the way low, those glutes have to squeeze and engage to push you back up. If you're only going halfway, it's really, really centralizing the work on the quads. And up. Now's a good time to do a form check. We're 40 seconds into these squats, the lower backs are feeling it. Core stays nice and tight here. Shoulders are back. We've got 10 seconds to go, hold tight with me. Remember, we get a little bit of a break from legs. And that is coming in five, four, three, two, and one, weights down, nice and done. Excellent job. Take that break, grab some water. Our leg round is done. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. All right, body's warmed up, legs are warmed up. Feeling good? Awesome, perfect. So, we're gonna bring out we're going to need the bench for this one. Um, and we are going to do some renegade rows here. So totally up to you. Well, let's do this. We're going to do, so we're going to do everything from the, from the bench. We're going to start off with incline renegade rows. So here's what that looks like. You're going to be at that incline. As long as this one, if this is okay for your wrist standing, but it should be good for the wrist. If not, I would say do this straight on the floor with the dumbbells, okay? So, for that renegade row, we're going to pretend we have dumbbells in here. We're going to go one, two, and then into that push-up. One, two, and then into that push-up. So, that's our long interval round. That's our 60-second round. Make sure you have weights nearby because starting with that very next exercise, we're gonna start using some weights, okay? I'm gonna put this at an angle, just so that as we bump into the next exercises, you can see me, okay? So, starting with those renegade rows, we've got 10 seconds if I get, get my music to go. All right, here we go. Hands on that bench. Try to put as much of your palm on the bench as possible for security. We're gonna start with the row. Right elbow jacks up towards the ceiling. Left. And then we're going into that push-up. So we're working some back here. We're working some chest. And we're obviously working some core. We do not have a cardio exercise coming at us this round. This is total upper body. We do have an isometric hold, which is going to get those shoulders working. For now, we're just focusing on keeping that butt in line with the spine. So straight line from the base of your skull all the way down your tailbone and to your heels. We've got 20 seconds to go. Long round here. Make sure you're keeping the elbow nice and close to the body, driving up through the ceiling and squeezing those shoulder blades. 10 seconds, hold tight with me. Four, three, two, one, and we're up. All right, shake the arms out. Grab the dumbbells. We're actually going to do this from a seated position. We're going alternating curl to press. So two dumbbells in hand, seated on the bench. I want your palms facing forward. We're going to start on that right side. I want you to curl the dumbbell up and then press. And then switch sides. Left side, curl up, press, and bring it in. So there's no momentum here, no help from the lower body. And your core is forced to come into play because of the single-sided aspect of the movement. Keep that lower back nice and straight here. I want you to think about pulling your abs in towards the spine, squeezing those muscles up so, as if someone was going to sort of sucker punch you. Supporting the weight, especially as it pushes above the head. Five, four, three, two, one, and bring it in. Dumbbells to the side. We don't have far to go. We're, we're doing next. We're just going to scoot the butt off the front of the bench, Alex, into bench dips. So, palms on the bench, facing forward. Take that little step out. Just scoot the butt just off. Here we go. So, right now, totally okay with that 90 degree bend in the legs. 
What I want you to focus on is keeping the butt nice and close to the bench so you don't feel like you're sort of overdoing it with the shoulders. Kick in the triceps butt here. We've got 10 seconds to go. You can slow it down, but don't take a break. Come on. Push it. Four, three, two, and one. Sit back on the bench. We're at the apex of that pyramid. Grab those dumbbells again. We're simply doing a little pulse hold here at shoulder height. So both dumbbells in hand, we're up at that shoulder level, and we're just doing a little pulse in 15 seconds. Smallest movement of the workout, but probably gonna feel like it's kicking your butt. Little, little movements, four, three, two, one, bring it in, nicely done. Woo -hoo! All right, let's work our way back down the pyramid to the base. We're back into those bench dips. Shake those arms out. If you wanna take a slight step forward, you can three, two, and one. Butt just comes off the bench, here we go. The further that your feet get from the bench, the more weight your upper body is pushing, the more weight your triceps are pushing. So it's a really good way, a really simple way to build strength in the triceps. It's just to play around with the foot movement. Obviously not required to step it out yet. Five, four, three, two, and one, bring it in nicely done. Again, shake those arms out. We've got presses, two shoulder, excuse me, curls, two presses. So grab both dumbbells. We're gonna start on the left hand side now. Palms facing forward. Here we go, curl, press, and bring it in. Nicely done. This is gonna feel a lot harder this round because of the bench dips and that shoulder press hold. So you're sort of fatiguing the muscles and then asking just a little bit more. When your muscles are already tired, it has to work a little bit harder to get the same job done, which means that it has to adapt. And that is exactly where progress comes in. That's where change happens. Adaptation, 10 seconds to go, hold tight with me. Keep that core engaged. Take a deep breath. We've got five, four, three, Two, one more push. Nicely done, excellent. And bring it in. Dumbbells to the side. We're back at the foundation exercise. We're going row two push-ups. We've got 60 seconds to go here. Line it up. Three, two, and one. Drive the elbow up towards the ceiling. One, and two, and right into that push-up. One, and two, and into that push-up. As you roll it into the push-up, focus on lowering the chest. So sort of lead with the chest, not the chin. If you feel like you're reaching for the bench with your chin, it's gonna strain your neck a little bit. Don't worry about getting too low. If you're not there yet, that's fine. Form always comes first. You're still gonna get that amazing work when you push up. As the body gets tired, don't lose sight of that row. You wanna squeeze those shoulder blades together at the back. We're not using any weight, but obviously the upper body is tired already. Come on, hips stay down. We're at 10 seconds. Hold steady. Keep that butt nice and low. Three, two, one, and bring it in. Shake those arms out. Heck yeah, that was a round. Arms feeling okay? <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Legs, done. Arms, done. I think that's all we need weights for as well. It is, yay. Weights to the side, bench to the side. This thing just wants me to know what the weather is at all times. All right. So, body's totally awake now, right? We're gonna hop over into a little bit of cardio. So, our goal here is to jack that heart rate up. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing for that first exercise. And then once again, we're gonna go 60, 45, 30, and 15. I think it's two. We're gonna spend the first two on our feet and the last two down on the mat. If those wrists hurt, that's where I'm gonna have you bring those dumbbells into play. So make sure you have them nearby, okay? So we're gonna start with, I'm gonna call them grapevines to a squat pop. So 
back and forth, front and back, and do these in high school and gym, right? One, two, three, pop. One, two, three. I'm probably gonna do two because I'm gonna run into a mat or a bar. Yeah, exactly. So it's that light speed work, staying fast on the feet, get to that squat, pop, launch through the toes. That's our 60 second interval. So it's gonna get us started right from the get go, breathing hard. I'm probably gonna go to diagonal here so I don't run into a barbell. We're going in four, three, two, and one. Here we go. Crisscross. Find that squat pop. I'm not super worried about the crisscross and alternating. I just want your toes moving. Don't worry if you get three in or four. Just keep the body moving. We're working on a little bit of footwork throughout, which means that your mind has to stay completely connected to what's happening. It's really easy sometimes as your body gets tired to start to ignore the movement and the form to ignore the heart rate going up. Not this time. Make sure you're pushing through those squat caps. Yeah, excellent. Nice height, nice speed. We've got 10 seconds to go. Keep it up, come on. Crisscross, nice, nice pop. Four, three, two, and one. Woo! Nice, nice speed. Heart rate's up there, I can tell. All right, take that deep breath. We're pushing over into skaters. We've got less than 10 seconds. Pushing it here. Four, three, two, and one, skaters. I was gonna put jump lunges in here. Thought that might be a little cool, so I didn't. <laughs> All right, so skaters. Bringing in a little bit of stability, bringing in the glutes, keeping that heart rate up. It's a good transition from those great vines. It's low impact, switching gears here, but still moving in that lateral direction. Keep pushing, come on. Big jumps, toes coming off the mat. We have 10 seconds to go. We're gonna be down on the mat. For the next two exercises, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out nice and down. Woo, you can tell the heart rate's up. I can't talk so much anymore. Down on the mat, 30 seconds of mountain climbers. Take that deep breath, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. We've got 30 seconds here. The next exercise we're moving into, we're going to plank jacks. So we're giving that core a run for its money before we lose that core around. That's what we did. All right, keep that butt low. Keep those knees driving. 10 seconds to go. Put some fire in it. Come on. Keep the toes hopping. Four, three, two, and one. Knees down. Take that 15 second break. Deep breaths in. Slowly exhale. We're hopping over into plank jacks. Here comes the puppy. <laughs> Plank jacks, back in that high plank position. 15 seconds, here we go. Out, in, out, in. I can't pause when I'm on the floor because it makes it sound to play. All right, once again, keeping that butt down. Four, three, two, and one. Quick interval for that exercise, take another breather. 30 seconds of mountain climbers to go, and we'll be back up on our feet. Here we go, everybody at four, three, two, and one, mountain climbers. All right, heart rate's down just a little bit from that 15 second break. We're feeling refreshed. Yes, the body's tired, but we're also feeling in control and powerful here. You push it to your limit. Hold tight to that nice form, butt stays low. If your butt starts to hike up towards the ceiling, you're not doing a mountain climber anymore. Five, four, three, two, and one. Walk those feet forward. We have two exercises, our foundation exercises coming up. Back to skaters. Heart rates up. Give those shoulders a break. Three, two, and one. Here we go. 45 seconds. We're approaching that foundation again. We want that heart rate up for our final round. 
We're moving it into core, calming the cardio down. So we want to make sure that the heart rate is up to push through that final round. Yes, keep it going. Keep those toes moving. I want you pushing hard off that front foot, getting some air. All right, cardio respiratory rate is up. We've got 15 seconds to go. Push with me, come on. Almost there, almost there. Using the arms for momentum, five, four, three, two, and one, shake it out. Woo, all right. That leaves us with one 60 second round to go. Great friends, two squat pop. I'm gonna bring it up nice and close. Three, two, and one. Again, if you lose count of those great vines, no big deal. Just keep those toes moving all throughout. This is the last 60 seconds of cardio for the day. Keep them moving, yeah. Nice pace, excellent. Woo -hoo! There it is, 30 seconds to go. Come on. Keeping those toes moving. Asking the body to do a little bit more here. It's all about reaching the limits that you think you have and pushing one rep more. It's a mindset. Mind says no, body keeps going. 10 seconds to go. Stick with me, come on. We're at five, four, three, two, and one. Woo -hoo! Take that break, you earned it. Dang. Woo, where's my water? Heart rate's up. You can always tell when I'm working hard because I stopped talking. <laughs> All right. Woo, cardio round. So, breathing hard. We have one round to go. It's our core round. So definitely grab a mat. And then we're gonna calm that cardio right down. Pull the focus to the center of our bodies and push through this final pyramid. Woo! Take some deep breaths in. Almost there. All right. Feeling okay? That's <laughs> what you get for one-on-ones, you know? <laughs> All right, so this is it. We've got one round to go. That 60 second exercise. We're gonna do planks, we're gonna do forearm planks. Keep it off of the wrists. We're gonna get about 30 seconds in and then I'm gonna add a little challenge in because I just I can't handle 60 seconds of plank. That's boring, right? From there, we're just gonna stay on the mat and we're gonna move through the rest of our period. But here we go, excuse me. But we're starting on the mat. We've got about 10 seconds here. Oh, see, good song for this one. All right, come on, phone. Here we go, starting on the mat. In a forearm plank position. Three, two, and one. Here we go. We're up in that forearm plank position. I want you to make sure those shoulders are stacked over the elbows. Again, pull the abs without sucking in. Pull the abs tight to the spine, right? Pull them backwards, tighten that core. Pay attention to what the core is doing. And keep that butt nice and low. We've got 10 seconds here. We're going to add in just an alternating leg lift. So the toe just comes off the floor a couple inches and then alternating sides. Keep the hips and the shoulders facing the mat and the hips nice and low. As you lift those toes up off the mat, it is not an excuse for the hips to jack up towards the ceiling. In fact, fight even harder to keep that butt nice and low. Back, stays nice and flat. 10 seconds to go, we're almost there. Woo, four, three, two, one, knees down. Woo, take that deep breath. We're up on all fours. We're doing one-sided bird dogs. So right hand, left leg, we're gonna reach and bring it all the way into the center. Tap that elbow to the knee, reach. So we're just sticking with that right arm, and left leg stretching out from the body. Try to keep the back really nice and straight. So as you stretch, you're not lifting up to a 
towards the ceiling and sort of exaggerating the arch. You're stretching away from the body. Again, keeping that left shoulder stacked over the wrist. Core is engaged. So as we bring the elbow in towards the belly button, nice and stable, 15 seconds to go. Woo -hoo! Hold strong. Under 10. Feel that three, four, three, two, one, and we're down. 30 second round, we're doing a side plank, forearm. I want you to go into your right forearm. Give that left arm a little bit of a break here. Right forearm plank in three, two, and one. Lift hips up. If you need that sort of little break halfway in between, you can bend the bottom knee and rest that on the floor. Otherwise, keep those shoulders, hips, facing forward, reach for that ceiling to keep that nice T. Try to keep the tension out of your neck. So if you're sort of straining up towards the ceiling or way down towards the mat, just sort of avoid that strain. Keep it neutral. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hips down, nicely done. 15 second hold on your back. Feet straight up in front, arms up above your head. We are gonna lift and flutter kick in four, three, two, and one. Arms up, legs up, and just little itty bitty flutter kicks coming out of those toes. Couple inches up, couple inches down. All I want from the upper body are the shoulders off the mat to that hollow body hold for three, two, one, and relax. Woo! Let's come back down that pyramid. Shifting it over, left side, side plank. We're going on forearm. Hips are up in five, four, three, two, and one. Lift them up. All right, taking those deep breaths in on these plank holds. Focus on your breathing. Deep breaths in, slowly exhaling. The longer you take the exhale, the closer you are to that finish line. Keep those hips nice and high. Feeling the side of the torso working hard here. We've got 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, hold tight, two, one, and hips down. Woo! Two exercises to go. Back on all fours, bird dog. This time, the left arm reaches out in front and the right leg is kicking back behind you again. Keep that back nice and straight. Here we go, let's hit it. Reach and connect at the center of your body. So we're climbing that balance zone again. And I want you to zone in. Keep that mind connected to the core. That stretch as your arm and leg reach away from the body. And then really think about drawing the rib cage to the hip bones to draw the elbow and the knee into the center. It's all about that contraction right there. Boom. You can either ignore it or zone in and get everything you possibly can out of the movement. Woohoo! We're already at five, four, three, two, and one. Draw it in. We have 15 seconds. So I want you to shake those shoulders out, give them a break. We're back in that forearm plank. All right. Forearms on the mat. We're up in three, two, and one. Here we go. Settle in. So we've got 60 seconds to go. I really just want to focus on form here. The way that we're going to kind of, we're going to add in a little practice for that, that idea, that sort of core contraction, right? The idea of the abs, that's their job is to bring the rib cage to the hip bone. So what we're going to do is pretend the spring is drawing your back up towards the ceiling, so sort of round that back. You can feel the rib cage go to the hip, and then right back down into that plank position. So again, imaginary spring draws your back, rounds it up to the ceiling, and then relax. That's the feeling of abs doing work. That's the contraction we're talking about. That's what we're going for. Anytime you do crunches, lying leg lifts, anything like that, that's the movement you want. That's the control. We're so close. We're on four, three, two, and one. Knees on the ground. Sit that butt back on your heels. Take a deep breath. And stretch those shoulders out. I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't yell at us anymore. We're done. Woo! 
Woo-wee. All right, so we're sitting back in that child's pose. If you want to reach back for those toes, give your shoulders a little bit of a break here and just sort of round yourself into that compact ball. Starting to focus solely on breathing, breathing in nice deep inhalation. And then as you exhale, just sort of let go of the tension, mental and physical. All right, go ahead and reach those hands forward one more time. Draw your body up into that quadruped, that sort of all fours position. Nice flat back, flat back to start. We're going to take a deep breath in, round the back up to the ceiling. Think about sort of creating space in between those vertebrae. And then as you exhale, lift the chest and chin, push the belly button towards the mat, and really dive deep into that arch. And just move between those two positions. Take your time, your pace. Stretching those ab muscles as you push that belly button towards the mat. One more time. Go ahead and come back to neutral. We're just gonna step real quick out into that high plank position and then drop the hips gently into Cobra here. If you wanna go down on all four, or excuse me, on forearms, if that's more comfortable, that's totally fine. I want you to think about though, either way, putting those shoulder blades in your back pockets. So it sort of opens up that chest, lift that chin nice and tall. Three, two, and one. Tuck the toes under and just jack the hips right up towards the ceiling, walking the hands back a little bit so that you're in downward dog here. Starting to stretch those hamstrings and the calves. Whew. Cool down is important if for nothing other than giving your body a little bit of time to sort of come back to, come back to normal, right? Heart rate comes down, body temperature comes down, gives the muscles a little bit of a time to sort of stop shaking. All right, walk those hands all the way up to your toes. So we're really feeling that stretch in the hamstrings, glutes, and lower back right now. Taking those deep breaths in, exhale, let your body sink a little bit deeper. Takes your brain 30 seconds to recognize that that stretch, that signal that's shooting to your brain, that it's, that it's okay, that it shouldn't resist. So that's why if you ever see someone say, stretch this for 30 seconds, that's why. All right, take that deep breath in really nice and slowly, roll those sh shoulders up towards the ceiling, big shoulder rolls back behind. Woo-wee! I'm sweating. <laughs> Let's see here. That's awesome. Woo! That